Hi, my name is Jim and I was retired. Happy New Year. Let's hope 2024 continues toward that fabled soft landing. In this week's video, I'm going to review my 2023 results and plans for 2024. Stay tuned. Now I'm finishing my third year of videos about my unexpected early retirement. That's why I call this channel, I Was Retired. I began it after completing my first five years of early retirement to share my lessons learned. But now that I'm 67 and this is my eighth plus year of quote, early retirement, the focus really is on my DIY approach to managing a retirement. Now, it's also been about a year since I introduced a revised portfolio by bucket spreadsheet. So I thought I'd show you my results for 2023 on that tool. Now, if you need a refresher on how it works, please see that video there. And I'll also put a link in the notes below on how you could download one with sample data from my Google sites. Please see those notes. Now I'll begin with this chart, which shows the progress I've made at building towards an overall 60-40 asset allocation in my portfolio. And I think this time last year, it was about 55-45, so I'm making progress. So the biggest change here has been in bucket two, which has moved from mostly intermediate bond funds to a mixture of Vanguard's dividend growth fund, VIG, and individual treasuries and tips. Now that has taken bucket two to a 60-40 asset allocation. And again, I'm holding those dividend paying stocks, mostly for the dividend it's currently paying, as well as the quality of the equity. I feel I can hold it for the intermediate time I need in bucket two. Now you can also see the bucket Three has moved up slightly to an 80-20 asset allocation. Bucket one remains 100% cash and equivalents. Now I've mentioned that I use compounded annual growth rates or CAGR to measure the performance of my portfolio over time. It's better than looking at individual average returns on in a single year. Now this is a look at that chart in my spreadsheet. And I've masked the starting value there in, in cell Q88, but it's about a, a million and a half. The rate formula in numbers is a way of calculating CAGR that shows that the time value in T90, allowing for annual expense that I pull out of the buckets sheet as a payout, the current value in F69 to calculate that 6.92% CAGR over seven and three quarters year of data. Now, by the way, I get that seven and three quarters time value with year frac, which takes the starting date and the ending date as shown here to come up with the calculation that I use for the uh, 7.76 in the calculation above. On the allocations tab of the spreadsheet, I have an overall look at asset allocation of our entire portfolio. It's about 45% large cap, 5% international, 5% small cap, 3% REIT or real estate investment tr trust funds, 13% domestic bonds, 2% I bonds, 5% tips. Now, a, a mostly individual tips, but there is some V tip, V T I P from Vanguard for short term tips. 12% are in T bills, 2% in CDs, and 9% in cash. I have a table on the allocation sheet that compares the current allocation with my target allocation and tells me a percentage and a dollar amount, which I've masked out there in the gray of how much I need to move to get the right allocation. Now, right now you can tell that I'm overweight T-bills and I'll be investing some of that 
into REITs and other asset categories in the coming months. The chart also includes this uh, spreadsheet that looks at the three tax buckets, taxable, tax deferred, and tax free. And with some Roth conversions this year, I've been able to increase that to uh, tax free bucket to about 16%. Now here's the chart of the three time buckets. Bucket one holds cash, CDs, treasury bills for three years worth of expenses. Bucket two holds large cap stocks, mostly that VIG uh, uh, ETF. Domestic bonds, some I bonds, tips, and intermediate treasuries. And again, I've moved to holding individual treasuries, uh, notes, and tips and that I can hold to maturity rather than a tips fund or a bond fund. Uh, because this is bucket two, nothing in the treasury world is longer than a 10-year treasury. Bucket three is large cap, international, small cap, the REITs, and long-term domestic bonds. Now that long-term domestic bond is mostly a non-qualified 3% fixed index annuity. I have a table on the three buckets spreadsheet that tells me how much I need to move from one bucket to another uh, based on an target annual expenses. Now I'm covering up the actual values, but you get a sense right now I need to move about $19,000 into bucket one from the excesses that are, that are in bucket two and three to get to the ideal bucket structure. But just like in asset allocations, I make these moves over time as things mature or market conditions allow. I'm not rushed into making these changes. Now, avoiding that 2023 recession and that early Santa Claus rally that began in November has allowed me to do some of these bucket moves. Um, and I consider the current buckets close enough for government work. Now, I have another spreadsheet, a budget spreadsheet, that begins with Quicken and then downloads and tracks over time. And one of the factors that I look at is expenses minus federal taxes. Since how much tax I pay depends on strategic withdrawals and Roth conversions I decide to make. Now, over the past five years, I can track that figure, and it's increased from about 80000 to nearly 110000 in 2023. And that's the cost of living here in New Jersey. But based on those figures, I also am able to calculate my personal inflation rate, which you can see has gotten back to about pre-pandemic levels. In 2021, personal inflation was 11.5%. Wasn't that a painful year? And that has fallen to 6.7% in 2022 and 4.4% in 2023. Now, the other metric that I had for 2023 was travel. And a year ago, I said I had hoped that we would be able to travel more in 2023. And we have, including trips to Anna Maria Island in Florida, Outer Banks, Fire Island on Long Island, and this fall, a trip to South Beach, Miami Beach, and the Keys in Florida. Now, of course, as shown here, when I make those travels, that has increased that line item of my budget from 2022 to 23. Travel costs were up more than 800%, but it was worth it. Hey, Please like and subscribe to this channel if you like entertaining ideas from a DIY retiree. I'm not selling a course. I'm simply here to share my perspectives to help you prepare for your own DIY retirement. I will conclude with my standard warning. I am not a CPA. I'm not a tax planner. I'm not a financial planner. I have no initials after my name. So take these as entertaining ideas from one educated consumer to another. Always do your own due diligence and seek out a professional if you need one. See ya.